Welcome to the Sky Magazine coverage of the European Ultimate Championships in Copenhagen. I'm Liam Brandt, accompanied by David Price here. This is our first game today. We have France mixed, taking on Great Britain mixed. Uh, tell us a little about the weather, David. So yesterday, the weather was quite changeable. We had a lot of, uh, a lot of rain and it was quite blustery at times. Um, and eventually it did have a bit of sun even. Today we've come out and it's a, a lovely sh shining sun, sunny day, bit of cloud, but still uh, a few blusters of wind and actually we're expecting some rain later on in the day. Um, so expect slippery discs. But here we have a match up in the mixed division, GB versus France. Yeah, David, definitely two contenders to win this tournament in the mixed division. We've seen really strong performances by both teams throughout the season. Yeah, we're just looking at the Great Britain roster there. Yep, so this uh, this is a, quite a unique uh, mixed team. For the first time in a long time, they've selected based on the teams, the players that are the best mixed players and, the, and those that are willing to commit to mixed for a number of years. Whereas in the past, uh, a GB mixed team will probably uh, comprise of those players that didn't make the women's or the open um, teams. So all these players, uh, whilst they do have some affiliation to open or mixed teams, haven't played in the, op uh, the open or women's um, tour at all this year and have been training um, in, in various places around the UK and at tournaments like Boston Invite and uh, the Dublin Golden Cup. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, David. It's a, it's a different game mixed, and it's good to be in tune with that. You may be a good open player, but doesn't necessarily mean you're good, a good mixed player. It's a different style. you got to adjust to throwing to both men and women. And I think that's a tactic that will prove well for the GB team. Yeah. So the, the management of this team centers kind of around um, the remainders of Cambridge mixed, who went to Lecco last year. So those are players like uh, Rich Hims, Nick Wong, Steve Colthammer, uh, Sam Vile, and uh, Lucy Barnes. And they ran trials over the winter and selected the team you see here. So some, uh, I've already mentioned some of the standout players there, but you can also include in that number the likes of uh, Mara Alperin, Neve Delaney, and many, many more. The names keep coming as uh, in, in both the, seen in both teams, both in the, in the open and the mixed division and women's division. So, what about the French team, uh, Liam? Yeah, the French team are very, very strong. Came second in the uh, windmill windup earlier this year and second at Dublin's Golden Cup. The Irish have been uh, the thorn in their paw so far this season, but could definitely take them. Had to do very close results, I think 15 11 in both tournaments. But a very strong team and maybe slight favourites going into this matchup, even though GB are the number one seed. So yeah, really exciting stuff. I'd expect to see one of these teams in the final, if not both. Yeah, they're drawing a lot of their talent from uh, Frizzlies and Is No Good, uh, two French clubs there. It's more typical in France to have kind of a mixed season and then a, an open women's season, like it is in Ireland. So a lot of these players playing both mixed and then playing both women's and open. But yeah, a very strong mixed edition. I think they came fourth in the UC in 2011. And they'll be looking to improve on that. Yeah, both these teams have actually met before at the uh, the Dublin Golden Cup and France came out the winners there. Yesterday, GB beat uh, Hungary. 17-2 and Italy 17-1 so they've had a, a bright start so far only being scored on three times but this game is going to be very different to those t those games I mean the French have prepared very well for this tournament playing some tough games both against GB and against Ireland so uh, I'm expecting quite a cracking game if I'm honest yeah this could be the best game we see all week the weather is probably the best two really tight teams in the tops of the divisions. And yeah, it could be a very exciting game. Expect to see big things from our captain, Odd Erman, number 11, the female player wearing the gray cap. Uh, she was fantastic at that Dublin's Golden Cup where he saw her play. 
a real focal point of this French offense. And she's also wearing a gloves and black arm under armor, so look out for her. Definitely one to watch. A lot of French supporters here in the grandstand as well. Oh, there's me. I can see myself. Where am oh. I? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Mom, I'm on TV. <laughs> if you want to get in contact with us here up in the commentary booth, say booth, commentary area, um, you can use Twitter. Uh, I, my Twitter handle is at David underscore Price. That's P-R-Y-C-E. And uh, we'll get that here on the laptop. You see the French supporters dancing there to I Will Survive. Yeah, we're in the sky box. Sky box. Sky box. Sky box. Welcome to the sky box. It's getting, the sun has actually gone in now. It's getting a bit cold, so I might have a have a break in a minute. Put my trousers on. As I decided, I decided this morning it was a short stay, but I'm just going against that decision slowly. I like the weather here in Copenhagen. I think it's a good mix, you know. If there's a team that's good and wins, they'll get a few points to win, and then it'll go calm, then it'll go rainy, so nice balance for the teams. The French getting really excited here. Almost as good as dancing and singing as the Irish. Almost as good as the dancing we did yesterday yeah. in the uh, Italian game. I had to hold on to the monitor a fear of an earthquake. But there are some GB fans here as well, as we just heard. If you're having troubles with the uh, stream, there are two links. One on Fancy and one with uh, sporttv.fi. Yeah, I think we've been having better success with the sporttv.fi link, so check out that one if you're having trouble with fancy.com. So it looks like GB will be starting on defense. On the line currently, we have Sam Vile with the disc there. He's one of the captains. Uh, Isabella Ashakola. And can't see everyone. Among, uh, that's, Char that's Charlie Still, Steve Colham, Amara Alperin. Oh, I can't see the end two. GB on D. Pulling now to the French. Yeah, the French opting to have four men on offense there. And we see them setting up with three male handlers and four women downfield. A tactic they've used a lot in the past. Really confident in their female cutters. And then just the lads in the back run the show. And a great bid there to start off this one. Yes. Such intensity. Lovely D there. Number 27, Catherine Ashton. Starting brightly, Sanval picking the disc up. Isolated Colt Hammer in the lane. Can't get it to him, but it's fouled on the mark. And GB there, punching that one in. And that's a break for GB, 1-0. And Ale Le Bleu rings out in the grandstand. GB with the first score, but France with a bigger support here. We'll see how that tactic uh, works out for France. They're going four men this time. We'll see if the GB team will be able to match their female players downfield. That's a huge tactic for the French. Isolate the female players downfield. So there's no lads poaching off and use that athleticism. And GB win that first battle there. So GB clear the field, ready for the next pull. This time we've had a few uh, new players brought on. With Neve Delaney and Rich Taylor and Callum Easton being brought on. A pretty much entirely new line for the French here. Often you'll see strict O and Ds, but obviously you have two O lines here, happy to switch it around. And GB come down with a zone. Looks like a fairly standard cup, just trying to contain. Yeah, with the outside ha uh, player coming in and applying the force. Yeah. So it looks like they're forcing in, in the middle. 
And they kind of want to stop those throws, the ones that go around the side. Oh, Bevan with a big bid there. Looks like their French player might be hurt here. Looks like he's going to hobble off. Bichon. Wearing the yellow headband. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's in a good way at all there. Yeah. He's on a heap on the ground. I don't think it was um, the intention of Bevan. It was a good bid. He was definitely within a, a good place to make a play. Onsalan touches it in. This cup going to be tied there. Nice big hammer across the field. Less win today, folks. So they're definitely on. Bruno Scala there. Younger brother of Augustine Scala. Another French player coaching the women's team. Big pivots. Yeah, GB doing very well just to contain the French. Not a lot of pressure on the dumps. Still a little cheeky scuba there. Oh, and a great grab. Oh, man. I should say Simon. Back to Scala. Good patience here by the French. Looking very solid against the zone. You wonder if GB will stick this the whole way up. And now really punching true. Looks like... Looks like GB might tran transition. Oh, and a call is made. Yeah, I think the call for transition has been made by the sideline here. Upfield appears to have gone man. Oh, Callum Easton here making the call. Looks like a travel call, just from the motions the players are making. Yeah, we're having to guess a lot of the calls from the replays. A few teams not using the uh, woof of hand signals. This back in, and yep, it's gone to man now. Simon finding his receiver upfield. Trying to walk this one into French. And doing so with style and ease. On oh, another call, a pick. A pick, and there's the Wolfdorf hand signals yeah, we want. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> they really help us and uh, anyone watching it at home know what's going on. Now discussion on whether it uh, happened before the throw and it, did it affect play. But it looks like it's going back. I think the stall was quite high. Um, but if he's over, over six, he'll come back down. Looks like he's only on four. Simon with the disc. A lot of space in the break side goes to Scala. Back to Simon. Another pick. Pick called. Maybe a bit sloppy downfield for the French. Just everyone trying to get involved and putting each other off. But still looking very much in control of the disc. <laughs> Tight. Hanselan driving it down the line. Parked us on the end zone. Looks off that little dish. Looking for his reset now. Getting high in the stall count. And another call. Foul call. Some of the French players using the wrong hand signal there, but I know what they meant. This is back in. Oh, and just punches that one straight in with a zippy flick from the lefty there. Yeah, that was Sasha. A, that was a break there. Uh, Force had come around too far, allowing that easy goal. Yeah, along that point, especially outside the end zone, we saw the GB players really trying to poach in, get the D, and maybe just being too aggressive on the mark and ending up giving off the easy break. So now GB come, come out with their O-line. For the first time this game. You see the head spike there in the replay from the French player. Uh, Unsalan, who came in for the injured player. So TB now on offense. Dom Dathan picking up, centering to Nick Wong. Is it to Sam? Oh, Sam Turner, the lovely grab there. Looks off the deep option. Swings it back to Wong. 
Young doesn't like what he sees upfield, but eventually gets it to Sam. Oh, an unlucky behind the player there. France now on offense. Yeah, France has a chance to break here. Ehrman now the disc. Finding a receiver with a lot of pressure on him. Paul, oh, and looks like it was a call here. A foul and an uncontested one. Paul with the disc. Not much options downfield, look for his dump. Great uh, dump defense there by the British. Seeing Antoine now. Threading the needle there. Yeah, I think Dom Dathan got a little touch on that. Great grab, Pauline. Back to Ehrman. The French really using this width of the field. Oh. That one just couldn't connect. GB back on offense. Yeah, it was a nice little option, but a bit too whippy, a bit too quick into that corner. France now able to hold on to it. GB now with a second chance to hold their offense. Nick Wong, oh no, sorry, Dom Dathan slowly picking up, bringing the front cone. Only what looks like a 3-4. And a, oh, that's an unexpected turnover. Dathan is normally very solid with the disc, giving the front uh, the French team a short field. Ehrman sandering over to this disc. Been given the task of punching this one in. Let's see what she can do. She's in no rush anyway. Ehrman now, looking downfield, looks off the open receiver, nice swing around, the French doing this so well, Mueller, the, vote, the middle man in that uh, three-man handler set, doing so well to keep that disc moving. Ehrman again, looks for the break, gets it off. Monet, back to Ehrman. Again, looking for that backhand break. Can she find someone in that gap? Up to the Monet, and it's in the end zone. Beautiful play by the French there. Great patience, using the whole width of the field and getting that score. France in the lead. Yeah, they've undone the break there that GB got in the first point. But lovely patience by the French. Took their time, swinging it back and forth. It's now 2-1 France. It looks like a timeout call. I didn't see any hand signal, but given that uh, GB gathered in the middle, oh no, no, it doesn't look like it at all. No, they like going to the center to decide their lines, um, come together as a team, and then allow the, uh, the, the line to be uh, walking up to the, to the line themselves. Yeah, unusual. You see most teams, everyone going to the line and then taking a knee and discussion going like that for the GB team choosing to center up in the middle. Maybe save the walk for a few of the players. <laughs> Over a tournament, that could be like miles. <laughs> <laughs> sure can. Onsalan with the disc here for the pull for the French. GBO line out again once more. Wong fields to Dathan. Over to Colt Hammer. Turner comes deep and under. Takes on Dathan down the line. Oh, and a lovely cut there. It gives it to Wong instead. Who breaks it to Delaney. Delaney the the powerhouse in the in the centre there. Pump captain gets it to Barnes. Barnes on the far sideline. Centers to Dathan. Right by the end zone now. And a foul. Monet getting a bit physical there. 
Dathan with a lovely break to Turner. The Chevron action flash boys working together there. And a nice patient bit, patient bit of offense there from GB to respond to the French one the point before. Yeah, that was a tasty inside break. You could see him looking for it, and yeah. I think it's a well-known player that he plays with. Saw his eyes, knew he wanted it, and got it for him. 2-2, this game going exactly as we expected, David. Inch for inch here. Yeah, I think the outcome of this game will just depend on who gets the breaks and exactly when. Um, I can't see it being more than two or three but to one team or the other. This is um, Liam Grant, David Price, commentating for Skyd Magazine, but working with Elisa TV from Finland. For those of you asking about when the videos will be on demand, we're hoping to get them out uh, the day after. Uh, we're just having a few issues with uh, formats, etc., etc. Some technical things, but we'll hopefully have the opening game and yesterday's games up at some point today. French and offense. Simon going after this pull. To Mueller. To Marta. Set up nicely now. Oh, and a miscue there by Paul. Giving GB a chance to break. Mara Alperin, Iceni Warrior, walks up to disc. And oh, lovely bid. Sam Rayner there just slowed down a little bit, allowing the French defender to get a bid in. That was number 27. Paul Everton, the man of the miscue, gets a straight back. Great stuff from the French there. Again, working in Haven't seen any deep shots from either teams really at this stage. Both playing very cautious, safe offense. Simon to Mueller. Mueller driving up line, but oh, it's a pick called upfield. The French is constantly trying to work these unders and with not a lot of deep cuts, they're kind of clogging that inside lane and that's what's creating these picks. They need to use the whole field a bit more, using the width, but they're not reusing the length of the field. Simone, Muller, Marta, swinging machines, these French. Muller just not really taking on the downfield cuts, but just keeping that disc moving as the accent handler. Pick again. The French really need to clean this up. I think a few deep cuts, David, would just open up the field for them a bit more. Yeah, there's a lot of clogging upfield. The handlers having to work very hard to keep onto the disc. I think GB defense is also doing a good job pushing them back now. And there's that bit again. We see Paul Eskutan, the man with the bid on the disc again. Mazas. Oh, that one just slipping through the fingers of the French receiver. Lola. For the first time, I like to talk about Richard Taylor, man of open bracket uh, design. Designed the German and GB uh, kits. They picked up, got it to Easton. Easton to Rayner, this time attacking the disc. Rayner around to Vile, and the GB now right on the doorstep. Vile, the captain, around to, to Taylor. And a timeout called. It's quite an early timeout, but I quite like that call. Right on the, right on the end zone there, they can set up some sort of play. Yeah, big chance for GB to get this break. Their offense looking a lot smoother in that point than the French. French clogging each other, a lot of picks. Maybe they're used to French play that often pick is just kind of overlooked. People kind of run around each other, but the British calling it every time. If they're impeded any way of following their receiver, they're gonna call that pick. And that's what's really slowing down the French. It's taking any momentum out of their offense. While GB could flow down the, the field with ease. Having a little bit of a jig. 
uh, during this timeout, the seven players isolated, having a chat what they're going to do with this O and see if they can play some tight end zone offense. So GB now coming out of the timeout. So they've come up with a vert stack. Mara Alperin in the dump position. Taylor on the disc. Doesn't appear to be an obvious isolation at the moment. Taylor gets it to Easton. Now on that near sideline. Bit of jigging from Taylor. Around to Alperin. Alperin across to Vile. Oh, not able to get it to him. Bit too high. Vile not, but Vile's bid not viable. <laughs> yes, exactly, David. That one, uh, the wind is blowing into the grandstand at the moment from, so that one just catching the wind a bit and a bit too zippy. The French picking up again. Well, let's get down the first deep shot we've seen here. Reeling that one in. French looking a bit better now. Labe catching that deep shot. Going for it again. Gets up, no bother. And a bit of contact here and he's going to call the foul. Again, not using the wolf of hand signal, making an X in front of his uh, chest. That is the old hand signal. It's now uh, one arm across the other. Also, also looks like you're taking a shot, shooting up. Does a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, the, the cross above your head is actually <laughs> the offside call. Yeah. Simone again. Oh, oh, and a hand block. You saw that one coming. Callum Easton there. It's getting mu I could see him getting a lot closer on the on the force and eventually getting his dues there. Alperin picks up, gets it to Vile. Sent us to, <laughs> to Easton, although Big Good got in the way there a little bit. Uh, sorry, Asher Collier got in the way there. Easton goes deep to Vile. Who bids an oh, it's a bit too far. The wind pushing the disc away. Yet again, not viable. <laughs> that violent wind just uh, catching the disc and <laughs> pulling it away from him. <laughs> we can have some fun with Sam's name, but that was a very good bid uh, by Sam. Captain putting a, a, a good performance in early on. Violent effort there from uh, the player. <laughs> So France having to work again from their own end zone. Yeah, nice break. Muller just looks as solid as a rock for this French team. Oh. And that one behind. Nobody's able to pick that one up. Like GB a chance again. It looked like they were rushing a bit there, not really taking their time. I think they really want to, they're really trying to score this game. There, yeah, score in this game quickly, rather. But um, score currently 2 all, although the scoreboard has fallen off the screen. Taylor goes all the way around to Easton and a lovely option for GB to score 3-2 GB momentum definitely with the British right now they look tight they're playing well David the French I think struggling to cope with the athleticism of some of those GB players down the field they just can't get free and the steadily handlers of Muller and Simon don't have much options and eventually throwing it away Seems like France have definite lines here, not necessarily O or D, but the same players may be playing together in pods. I think it seems like they have almost three lines separate from each other, regardless of O and D. And let's see replay of this goal. This is a beautiful buttery biscuit over the top. Got a lot of support here from the French on, our, on the right of the screen as you look from the middle. And uh, a lot of British contingent here in front of us. Not quite as vocal. Very British way of watching, and they'll just uh, chip in at the appropriate time. But a big support for both teams. I think I believe both teams are actually entered into all divisions, all five divisions. Wow. So some big squads here for for these two nations. Vile pulling. 
French picking it up. Aman. Oh, another blunder from the French there. Bevan there with a lovely bid. Probably put his uh, French opponent off a little bit there. Alperin picking up. Centres to Vile. Across to Matt Bevan. Action, Chevron Action flash, uh, flash Legend. Currently playing in the mixed squad. And a call on the, on the mark. Was that his choice to play mixed or didn't get the open team, David? No, I think he actually chose. I think he entirely uh, yeah. chose to play mixed. I would have thought he's such a strong player. Yeah, yeah, uh, but he's allowing some of the younger players to play open. There are many a Chevron player still on the open squad. Gets it to Alperin. Who gets it down the line to Mi uh, Mike Noblet. A lovely throw there down the line to 27. Catherine Ashton now stuck on this far sideline though. She goes all the way around to Bevan. Who gets the greatest off? Oh, but no one there, just a French player. French player choosing not to walk this one out of the end zone and get the disc moving quickly. Great, greatest attempt there. Uh, the wind not helping him out though. Oh, man. You see the French trying to go for this quick transition because when GB gets it up, they're squeezing them hard. You can, see, you can see Matthew Bevan there poaching off as well. He's baiting for a layout. Oh, and a great poach there again from the GB players. Helen Swan on the disc. Sorry, Swan Thompson on the disc. Goes lofty to Ashton, who resets to Bevan. And Noblet free in the end zone. Looks like a foul call. Oh, no, 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 they've given it. And GB score, 4-2. Yeah, we see the GB defense is being gargantuan there. Really sucking in tight. They could see that the French are just trying to work the unders the whole time. So downfield uh, defense really helping each other out, poaching off. Other handlers coming in tight and just squeezing that open underside channel, taking away all that option. And that's the only one the French are looking for. They need to look maybe more hammers, more deep shots, be more creative and go for the aggressive throw. Otherwise, GB is going to keep squeezing them in that. Uh, a bit of a choke in Hagen here for the French. Indeed. And GB want to be careful if they keep sitting under, they are going to get beaten deep. And this French team do have that capability. So whilst they're playing good D now, and they are playing very good D now, they have to be aware that they, have to change, they may have to change something later in the game. Unlucky with Matthew Bevan there. A nice attempted uh, greatest. Ooh, he might have been down. I think he was, I think down, he was yeah. down anyway. And that French player could have walked forward. I don't know why she didn't bring it forward. I can tell you why he didn't, because she knew as soon as that defense gets set up, they were going to squeeze them tight. Well, at least take the yards that, you can, that you're given, right? See Neve Delaney there wearing the Golden Cup uh, headband in his timeout. Uh, I'm presuming Neve has some Irish heritage. Considering her name, I believe so. Yeah, we might try and uh, wiggle her on a few Irish teams in the future. <laughs> Good one to chalk down. I think she might. I'm not sure where in Ireland, north or south, but she definitely studied in Scotland uh, before uh, playing for the punt. Uh, is, I think she lived in Oxford, and uh, last year playing for Cambridge Mixed. I bet my hat that uh, she's from the north if she studied in Scotland. Yeah, many of the Northern Irish people choosing to study in Scotland. Just a short trip over the pond. More universities there, and it's, they are part of the UK. And uh, we have two lads on the Irish Open team who would have been from the north, went over to the UK to study and played ultimate there, and, and still live there, but are playing for the Irish team. And that's kind of common from the lads in the north. We're being told off for saying the word buttery again by Nick Smith. He doesn't like the word. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Can't help it. These guys are great, throwing some great backhands. Um, and a question from Christian Illum. Is there a minimum when it comes to how many girls you have to have on the team? Well, on the line, you have to have a minimum of three. Um, and of course, you can go up to four. But in terms of the whole squad, I don't believe there's any uh, minimum requirement. You just have to be sensible, I guess. Yeah. 
No, not no minimum requirement. Just need to have three girls on the line, or four if the offense calls it. And you'll see that call with um, two arms above their head, stretched out. That's uh, four guys. And then clasped uh, between two fists, that's uh, four girls. GB pulling just out there. And that might work into their favor, giving them the ability to set their defense and be nice and tight. Personally, yeah. per personally not a fan of pulling out, but in this sense it might work as it has been previously for the, for the Brits. Not a fan of pulling out, David, good to know. Um, <laughs> Salan picking up the stiffs. French using a first stack now, and again, GB kind of uh, slamming that. Coming down with a bit of a zone. This might suit the French a bit more, I'd say, if, they, if GB choose to stick with his zone. Being told here by uh, Joran Kearns, one of the pump players and Cambridge players, that Neve is actually definitely Scottish. <gasps> She's from one, from one of the islands. Ah, the islands. <laughs> the good old islands. The biggest Sorry. Scottish island being Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> True, but uh, no, probably something like Shetland or Orkney. Okay. Um, okay. But you can see why we'd be confused and then like Neve. Well, we'll still try and steal her anyway. <laughs> and I knew she went to a Scottish university. But GB zone here, giving the French a bit of trouble. I think this will suit the French more. What was really killing their offense was uh, those picks and whatnot. So I think. The zone will suit them, and there they go oh. for a buttery biscuit as well. I'll say it if they throw it, folks. That one, a beauty. Yeah, just taking advantage there of uh, Helen Swan Thompson, not not being quite as tall as some of the other players, throwing just over her for the goal. France holding their offense this time. 4-3, GB. One canal there with the assist to Money. Just as expected, this game very tight. And the crowd, the French crowd in particular, winning the supporting fight though. French also pulling out. Nick Wong jogging up to uh, pick it up. A lot more crowd uh, coming in now and it, trying to enjoy this game. Wong bricking the disc. Yes, Dathan is his dump. Delaney, Turner. Colt Hammer, and here we have it, Colt Hammer on the disc, but a travel called. So Wong back on the brick mark. Looks like the French have got a, a zone, but it still gets it to Colt Hammer. Colt Hammer finds Wong to Turner. Back to Wong. Wong fakes a deep. Dathan comes in. Back to Wong. These two work together a lot on Cambridge Mixed. Last year in Lecco. With a fantastic first half against Dragon Thrust. Wong across to Dathan. These two working well here again. Turner. To Colt Hammer. Back to Dathan. Not seeing much of the girls so far. To Wong. Back to Dathan. Now Delaney getting involved. Oh, and a lovely toss there for Anna Koska. 
Yeah, beautiful throw there. A little high release. The left-handed player threading the needle there. Fantastic throw. Orgasmic stuff from Neve Delaney. Yeah. Once they get involved, these girls are very good players. And it was a little bit uh, male heavy there from the beginning, but I think they were just trying to isolate the likes of Colt Hammer and uh, Dathan until they get near the end zone where the girls can come into their own and uh, use their, their powers to get the goals. Yeah, the girls taking care of business there at the end there. Leave with a cheeky break. Going down with uh, four women on offense again. Oh, another pull there, Richard Taylor pulling. And that also landing out. Taking on a bit of a different option there with the uh, right backhand. I've just had a tweet from David Sparks, he's one of the game advisors, saying that there actually is the minimum for female players in, the ro in your roster. If you look in the uh, Wolfdorf Appendix B1.1.1. Uh, I did not know this. I think this is probably a new addition. I also had a message from Stephanie Bolton, a player in Uganda, saying the same, but she wasn't sure if it was actually in, in, written down. But there you go. Game advisors advising us even here. <laughs> even whilst we're not actually uh, using them at this tournament. The Lemony Game Advisor sent, making its way to Copenhagen. Scala with the disc. Again, three men back with four women on field. And the pick is called. Mm, but did it affect play? It did happen that? quite a while oh, ago. Fair enough. I think it happened two or three passes ago. I should at least go to the pass after the fact. The female player, number 33 for a GB, signaling pick with her hands. And then as soon as the disc turned over, her arms quickly dropped and uh, <laughs> was happy to continue. But I think this one uh, will go yeah, back. It happened, it happened quite a while ago. I was too busy watching the play. <laughs> French player checking the wind as if he didn't already know. Yeah. Dubert there. Maybe we'll see a hawk coming. This is eyeing it up. Yeah, I think we've only seen one of those from the French in this game. Yeah, and it was a success, so maybe somebody should try more. Oh, what a nice bit there from... And two, the girls getting very close on defense here. Dubert going up line, this one hanging up. Does well to read it. Looking at the ends are now. Scala. The cheeky round, backhand not in yet. Oh, and it's oh. a goal for the French. Great layout grab. Fingertip catch. And France evening up, 5-0. GB had some lovely bits in there, but weren't able to convert them into blocks. A lot of getting horizontal there for that goal. Sorry, it's 5-4, GB. My apologies. Better offense there from the French team. A bit more aggressive putting for the girls and keeping their spacing a little better. Another tweet here. This is from Jonathan Saunders. Saying you ha we haven't mentioned the, the Dathan effect. This is a true, this is a real thing, a physical phenomenon. When Dathan gets the disc, everything sp slows to half speed. <laughs> you just watch the way he fakes. It looks like it's really slow, but and then it'll suddenly go quickly, and uh, it'll break you like a giant with Tinder. <laughs> and here he is now. There's the Dathan effect. Slow fake gets it to Barnes. Barnes down the line to Dathan. Dathan isolated but finds Turner. Turn on this far sideline and takes on the deep shot to Delaney. But in comes number 74, Susanna Bigood. 
Stealing that goal off Delaney. I think she'd given up a little bit. Big good making sure. 6 4 GB. Big idea. Just having a better read under this, able to come across. Hard one for Delaney to get there. I don't know if she would have got there if she still went full throttle, but maybe a call from her uh, GB partner to let that one off her. She had it, no problem. Yeah, it was well run down by Big Good. And a fantastic ultimate name, if I'm honest. Susanna Bid Good. <laughs> I no, she's not Bid Great now, but she's Bid Good. She's Bid Good. Maybe she will Bid Good later. <laughs> I feel that name is almost too obvious for fun. <laughs> you know? What do you mean? No such thing. The world's a pun, no? It's just, it's just, they just write themselves. There's no creativity there. <laughs> Getting some banter here from Lewis Glover in the crowd. Yet again, the uh, GB Masters team watching, women's women's Masters all here watching to support their uh, compatriots. But France now on offense. Back to Simone. The ever swinging French. Patiently moving it up. Liking his own look from uh, GB. Again, there's a call in the field. Maybe a travel, I'm not entirely sure. But it will go back to Simon. Little three man cup here from the GB team. Allowing passes backwards, but really shutting down the upfield throws. And the wind has picked up a little bit here, so that's a good option, I think, for GB. Especially with a giant like Colt Hammer. Yeah, the French keeping possession, but not moving the disco field. And you wonder how long they can keep this up. A chance to go field now, and they take it. 91 Canal. Back to the bear. We see a call here. Looks like it's going to transition to man. Chance to cram it in, they don't go for it. Patient as always, Dubert, using the whole wit. A little scuba over the top, sugar-coated. Simone, yards away from that goal line. Look at that space, treads the needle and it's a goal! Mike Noblet there was very close to the D, should have got his feet. But the, yeah. uh, the French player there ripped it from his grasp. Yeah, just getting her hands to this on time. Brilliant grab. Score here, 6-5 to GB. Half will be uh, nine in points. As the total cap is 17. Some uh, information on uh, Callum Easton. He actually uh, is one of the Scottish players on this team and has had to travel up to six hours to training and, and not even complaining when other play players who come from nearby <laughs> complain about their travel time. So in total, something near 100 hours spent traveling to and from training. I know that's uh, a sickener. I know for myself, to train with my team Pelt at home, I drive uh, an hour and a half there for two hour training and then an hour and a half back. And it's, it's not ideal. I spend more time driving than training. So I, I feel that man's pain. GB now on offense. Wong gets it to Turner. Back to Wong. We're seeing this isolation between Wong and Dathan. Oh, and he didn't like the, the long shot from Turner. But Koska able to. Save Dathan. Who she, who she gives it back to now. Across to Wong. Wong goes around to Turner. <laughs> Who's able to have a second bid, but he was out, came back in. Should have taken one step in and then caught it. 
Yeah, he had the opportunity to easily tow that one in, but um, obviously lost it. Ehrman setting it deep. Beautiful flick oh, put on a plate for a receiver. That's on with the goal. And now France equal it up. Six all. A very back and forth game so far. Neither team taking more than a couple points lead. Yeah, GB probably looking stronger overall. Just a little slip up there and the French punish straight away. Yep. Yeah, very well played there by the French. Just two passes for the goal. Ehrman with that feathery flick. She's been doing a lot of work on uh, the French D-line as well. Often poaching in lane, shutting down downfield options. She hasn't really got the deeds, but she's really cut off a lot of things and doing some fantastic work for the French team. This is Liam Grant and David Price here, commentating for Sky Magazine, working in partnership with Elisa.tv, who are running the production. If you want to get in contact with us, we are available on Twitter, at David underscore Price, P-R-Y-C-E. We've got the laptop up here. We'll uh, read out some of your shout-outs, tweets, questions, potential answers for our questions. Uh, the GB here, looking to hold their offense. Wong with an isolated Colt Hammer. Oh, and almost a honey pass there to Barnes. Delaney streaking across. Resets to Wong. Now back with Dathan. Turning straight to Wong. And Koska. Takes the inside to Delaney. To 74 to then to Koska and to Dathan on the in the end zone line now. Goes for the lefty to Wong. A cheeky little goal there. Dathan to Wong is a connection we're going to see all, all game. GB up 7 6. A masterclass in offense there by the British. It was so smooth and silky. Really hard cutting, especially from Neve Delaney downfield. Some crisp passing and. If they can play every point like that, no team can stop them here at this tournament. Yeah, those are the sort of points you need to, to get loads of in the bank. Get that muscle memory and the playing time together and you will always be unstoppable on offense. Time on the pitch here for uh, Robert White of Leeds. GB now out on D against the ferocious French. Dubert with the disc. Hits Gala eventually. Getting some yards with the swings now. Oh. Just about saved that one. Monet. Back to Dubea. Looking deep, looking it off. Not much options now. Eventually sending it. Scala under this one. A lot of pressure. Oh, does well to get his hands in it. Great body position by Scala, the big man. Taking it down. Yeah, Robert White there getting on the wrong side. He really wants to get on the inside, tr on, on the inside track there. So he can put a bid in. He's going to come over the top. He's more likely to foul uh, or strip even. And uh, the French had the advantage the whole way for that point. Yeah, Bruno was just able to body him out there. Didn't really have to jump and attack to this, but had the right position. And that's nine tenths of the law in this game. Getting more uh, banter from John, from John Saunders. You uh, will have already noticed that we're seeing a lot of the Wong Turner Dathan show. But uh, in, in general, the principle is 
if Wong is is a uh, is on the ball, Turner is open. There's a very strong connections here through the Cambridge uh, ultimate scene. Wong, Turner, Barnes, Dathan, Delaney, Colt Hammer, all playing for the uh, the team that went to Lecco last year. I probably missed them all. I can't quite see them on the field. Oh, Vile, he also went to Cambridge. Uh, went. Surprised you to get a Wong Turner opponent in there somewhere. Oh. So many options to play with. We'll come back to the. Uh, the puns. Oh, and a short pull there by the French. Not only just over half. Can GB capitalise on this? And just as mentioned, here's the Wong Turner principle. Turner looking deep to Barnes. Oh, and just floating out. Well, as I say, just a good 10 metres out the back of the end zone there. Turner not really firing well there from that flick side. Bit too much of Coleman's mustard on that one. Yeah. Nice British reference there, Mr. Grant. <laughs> so France now with a chance to break. Bit good on the force. Airman walking it up. The gray cap on. Great pressure from the GB defense and get this one. Wong there. Running in, working the offense now. And there we have it, Turner with the goal. And the Wong Turner principle, not Wong this time. <laughs> well, I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> Wong just was absolutely fantastic there. Getting the D. Beautiful faking. Had the French in a disarray. They were left in a heap on the ground after he faked every player on the field out of it. Uh, great stuff from him. Yeah. After the turn of turn, <laughs> Wong made sure. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> But uh, Viva La Resistance, the French, still in this one. Just a point down. Here's the replay of the goal. Wong taking control. Watch these fakes just... Even Delaney thought she'd been missed out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> GB up 8-7. The wind here still blustering in. Uh, through the through the camera towards the stands here. Far with the pull. This goes up for the French. A ball in the air. Oh, and a great defensive play by the British. Yeah, Robert White there got it right this time. Was on the inside. I think maybe he heard my commentary. Got the position early. I got the bid in at the perfect time. Sasha getting up and getting high, but didn't have position and couldn't get that one. Simon slipping before getting that dish back and then it's being sent straight away to Sasha just can't get up and over his defender. So on the field, Bevan with the disc. Oh and Mara Alperin getting up the line. Ooh, almost getting deep there from the from the poached French defender. I think everyone could see Foul. her but her. A foul called. Alperin leading from the back. Across to Vile in the middle of the pitch. Almost, almost exactly to Bevan. Bevan goes deep to Robert White. Oh, and he toes the line. Bookends for Robert White. 
and the half for GB 9-7. White plucking that one out of stars. What a fantastic point for him. He'll be delighted with himself. And that's what a way to take half, David. Yeah, the Chevron action, action flash player, Robert White there. Making sure on, on D at this, at this far, this far uh, left end. And towing in at the, at the right end there. Book end. There'll now be a couple of minutes for the half, where we'll have a bit of a break. Join us for the second half of this mixed division pool play matchup between Great Britain and France.
Welcome back here to the second half of GB Mixed versus France Mixed. GB currently up 9-7. And GB are now starting on offense. And France get that pull in. Wong centers to Dathan. <coughs> Apologies there. To Cole Hammer. Cole Hammer fakes the deep. Well marked out by the, front, the French there, but Dathan, incredible speed in his first few steps there, gets free down the line. Doesn't like Wong's reset. Oh, but takes a little beautiful break to Cole Hammer, who goes deep to Turner. Reels it in now on the doorstep. Dathan is entirely free. And there he is for the goal. Dominic Dathan. Easy offense by GB there. Straight out of half, up 10-7. Yeah, and maybe lucky not to be up more, or maybe not to be more clinical, because at the moment they look a far better team, especially in offense. French struggling, GB just moving with grace and finesse. And the French need to pull up their socks if they want to get back in this one, David. Yeah, they're now three points down, trading a couple break, uh, break, a breakdown. And uh, the GB offense definitely looking a lot smoother, I'd say. And also applying on defense a, a large amount of pressure on the French offense, stifling a lot of the options that they want. Yeah, really utilizing that break side, the British. Flinging it up at will and then punching that one in. French choosing to have more women on the line again. Last time we saw this, they did score their own points, so let's see if they can do it again. Richard Taylor pulling in. Oh, that one absolutely beautiful, pinning the French back in their end zone. Doing well to progress it up, this one hanging in the air. Plenty of lads under there, a huge grab. Oh my word, how did he get up there? I think he sat on Noblet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thought that was just a fantastic grab by Sasha Minion and his known. Absolutely out of this world, getting huge. I don't know, a lot of people under the disc, I think that one's a fair grab. Yeah, I think they've declined any call there. Yeah, good spirit there by the British. Yeah, I can't wait to see a replay of that one. Deep shot is there. Oh, that one just too bladey and easily taken down by the British. Bevan now to Noblet. Oh, and a miscommunication in the middle between the, the girls and Noblet there. So France giving the disc back. That wind gusting up again, maybe causing those few little turnovers. Ehrman in the handler set now. We see uh, two girls back handling as opposed to the three men we saw before. Maybe this worked a little better for the French. Lauda looking for a dump. Gets that high flick off. Send this to Ehrman. Have to go high for that one, Oliver. Ehrman. I'm liking seeing Ehrman in this uh, central handler role with the guys cutting downfield. And a little bump there by uh, Bevan. No harm done. Ehrman swinging again. If this was the European Swinging Championships, I think uh, the French would win it handily. No comment there. A little tweet here from Ali Smith saying that she's loving the Dathan Wong Turner connection, but would love to see the girls getting involved more. And I agree. Uh, definitely the way to win mix is to have, yes, obviously to have strong uh, male connections, but the women will, will be what win and lose you games. So, and these girls are good. So I would like to see more of them getting uh, more invo involvement from them. Sasha looking off the hammer there. Jams it up the line and a huge grab. Great point by the French. One of the GB players very far away from the play, calling it out for that. That one clearly in from where I was sitting. And that kind of proves my point. Girls can win you mixed. 
That's a lovely bid there from the French player. Yeah, the GB women doing really well to post on defense, but not getting involved in offense as much as they'd like, I'd say. And the French using the women. Oh, we see that grab again. Sasha getting big. That one just absolutely fantastic. Different angle here. Wow. Ooh. Air alert. Getting huge. They didn't have some contact in there, but I think. Yeah, definitely a debate there for a foul. But uh, a great play nonetheless. Slicky smooth flick this side and clearly inbounds. Chibi now on offense. Dathan receiving. Both teams now working out these pulls to great effect. Dathan to Koska. to Barnes, swings across the Colt Hammer, just as we hope now, the girls getting involved more. Koska gets the reset. Takes on the break to Dathan, lovely, lovely play there between the two of them. Koska coming back, straight away to Barnes, nice gainer there, offset to, to Wong. Doesn't like the down the line for Colt Hammer. Does like the around to, to Dathan, but oh, and a nice bid by Delaney in the backup, but neither able to keep hold of the disc. France now with a chance to break. Currently down 10 8. Unsalan picking it up. French in a bread stack. Not a lot of options. Flings it deep. Good position by the British defense. Yep, Wong. Getting that one on D. Gets it to Dathan straight away. To Colt Hammer. Oh, and a, a repeat the previous reset there. This going high and above all the GB players. So France come down and call a timeout. Yeah, Vanson blocking that one out of the air. A fantastic snatch. Good play from the French there. Yeah, I think. I don't know, maybe again the GB team heard us. There are definitely more of the girls getting involved. Trying to play the, uh, you're seeing a team no, teammate, not a gender. And uh, unfortunately not able to get their resets working and a lot of flow discs going up, giving it straight back to the, to the French. As we see there, the two replays of, of both those, those mistimed resets. Phenomenal ups on display there from the French team. Two points in a row. Swinging his arm at that one. Couple of points into this half. Not quite sure who's got in control or where the momentum's going. Um, but whoever can come out of this might come away with the win. Great Britain looking really sharp. I've seen him play a couple of times this season and they've just got better and better and better. And currently the Irish mixed team would be favourites to win the tournament, but no bias involved there. <laughs> no bias involved. Hey hey, look at the stats. One win will wind up, one the Golden Cup, beating both these teams here. Be hard to call them anything else but the favourites. Uh, point out on Twitter, I do not have a Twitter account, so I don't know who Ultimate Liam is, but don't be giving him any favorites or likes or anything like that. That's just them. <laughs> <laughs> the other Liam is contactable through <laughs> at Skyd underscore Liam Rosen. But here up in the stands with me and... That's the different and Liam. And, and, and no <laughs> me and no Twitter Liam Grant. Twitterless Liam. Uh, which definitely should be a parody account. Seamus Murray, mm -hmm. please start that. Um, anyway, France. They're on offense. Oh, of course, the pick is called. Yep, sorry to finish the sentence. That, uh, you can contact us through David underscore Price, P-R-Y-C-E. That's my Twitter account. I'm getting a bit of a conversation between me, Liam Kelly, and Ali Smith about mixed 
You know, you see, but Pauline sending it deep. Leave the lane in chase. Bit of contact there. It doesn't look like anything's called. It's a very nice bit of bit defense there by Neve. Getting a hand in and a bid. Saving her team there from a break. Yeah, the outstretched canal just couldn't gather that one up. Getting a bit cold up here in the stands and the wind is still blustering across. Me and uh, Liam having to be penguins a little bit. So Wong to Colt Hammer isolated. Oh, he throws it straight to the French legs. The froggy legs there. <laughs> of 24. Clover, <laughs> yeah, there, doing well. You see him on the disc now. Clover unable to connect on that one. I'm getting a lot of tweets from John Saunders. I can't mention them all, and I think some of them are jokes anyway. But uh, maybe if you give me a real fact, I'll... Uh, this goes up. I'll this one it. hanging. And here is Steve Colhammer. Huge in the air! The number 50 for GB. A previous death or, death or glory and Ironside player. Showing his worth. 11-8 to GB. Hungry like a shark there. Getting up and that. Grasping that one of one's his French counterpart. Absolutely fantastic grab. We see the replay of that layout there. Surprised the French player didn't call a foul on that one. And then we see this hawk. Hanging in the air. But Argy Bargy gets up and takes that one down. a tweet here from Javin Lee. He's suggesting that it's too bad that Buttery Biscuit Handle is already taken on Twitter. Unlucky Liam. Maybe it's a frosty flick, I don't know. I'm sure we can come up with something that will be more catchy and uh, frisbee oriented for Liam. I think Twinder, is Twinder taking? Twinder really hasn't taken yet. You haven't really, well, firstly you need to make the app. Well, I'm wondering is the handle taken? Oh, I'll have to look at it, but. Um, you have to use it as well. We're not just going to make it for you if you don't use it. Well, I'm not going to make it. I'm talking about a parody account here. Oh, I see. Well, I see what Seamus is going to... Twitter list till the day I die. Which is unhelpful in this instance. Oh, and Bevan with another bit there. Oh, the bear. The, the bear. French moving well now. This one quite high. Oh, and some contact there. I think it'll be an uncontested foul. It was uh, Charlie still there? Came over the top. Yeah, good pressure, but just didn't really have an angle to make a play on that disc. And back in for the. No, not back in yet. Daniel Nobile now. Better known as Knobs on the disc. We have a couple of knobs on the field. Wow. We went there. Dubair. Ehrman. Good fake there by Dubair. Getting free. Ooh. Oliver. Ooh. Oh, oh. unlucky. And a great bid by knobs, but just couldn't get a fingertips to it. Some very quick play there by the French. Yet again, probably a bit too quick for the, some of their receivers. But Vile picks up and takes a deep option to Bevan. Can Bevan reel in? No, oh, no, the wind there taking it away from him. Not able to finalise that goal. That would have been another break there. But GB still up 11-8. Bevan looking a bit clunky running that one down. Probably not known as the deep receiver on this team. I think me and Pricey would have gathered that one up, no bother. Crutches and all. <laughs> yeah, but together we would make a like 12 foot person. <laughs> we would have got any, anything. 
How many feet do you have, Francie? <laughs> <laughs> France now trying to work out of their end zone. Because I'm down to one at the moment, so. <laughs> okay, I'll be the feet. <laughs> you can be the head and hands. I definitely got a big one of them anyway. Oh, Val, very close there to the to the to the bid, and a foul called. Yeah, I think just a bit of instant contact there. Simon on the dip. Yeah, same place, two people. Do there. Oh, and that one not so incidental. That was late. I think he was. He had a lot of momentum coming into that, and that's probably a bit dangerous. I think Bevan is apologizing here. Yeah. And I don't think there's much else he can do. I think he knows he's in he the could I think he could have slowed down and just got a force on. There are times when you sh you have to make a decision between bidding and just getting a force on. And there he was just a bit late. Whoa, yeah. And and didn't think about putting a, applying a force, which is probably more effective at that point in time. He's not a small man either. There. Flinging this one deep. Good shot. It's up again. Is that the buttery biscuit he needs? And a goal for France. Allez les bleus. Yeah, well, well worked out of that corner. They were under a lot of pressure from the GB defense. Up in this far corner. But once they'd broken out, it was very hard for the British to catch up. And a good goal there by the French. 11 9 now to GB. The bruised and beaten Labert chasing that one down. Casual as a cat there, going up with one hand. And a nice fact we've got here from uh, Dan Gobold is a uh, Fiance Anna Koska is the least educated of the GB mixed team with a mere BSc. <laughs> I know there are a lot of people with PhDs and uh, masters in Ultimate, but a large amount of them also here on the GB mixed team. Not me. <laughs> Not everyone needs one. It just happens to be a large proportion of Ultimate players. Dathan stops the pull, gets it to Wong. Guess who? Isolated Turner. Bit good, coming under. But gets it to Barnes. Barnes to Dathan. Dathan, ooh. And Neve just slowing down a little bit. Not able to hold on to that disc. France now with a chance to break. See him again. And Selin sending one into the skies and taken down. Pop pass, and it's a goal, France. Oh, and a pick is called. Oh, I didn't see any pick there, David, did you? No, I'm not sure about that. I don't, I don't know who, who was picked by whom. Maybe we'll see in a replay at some point, but. Yeah, I don't think uh, the man scored was Definitely not being closely marked. No, you can see by where Nick Wong is. It's, that's his defender. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that pick call. She was coming out to help the other uh, British player out, but was not closely marked. And a man, it's a goal for France. Well deserved. Unterlan. Two scores there for row for the French. 11 10 now, David. And that's a break to the French. A, li a little bit too much isolating of the handlers meant that Dave had to take on um, a reset that he, a bit of a late stall count reset. And uh, the French defender had read it perfectly and got through and took the disc off of GB. Yeah, great play by Celine Antoine there. In the number eight jersey. We're currently 82 minutes through this game. Game to 100 minutes.
And now GB on O. Need to hold on to this point. It's quite I th think it's quite a key point of this game. If they can hold on to this break, they have now. Colt Hammer to Turner. Doesn't like the deep shot, deep look from Barnes. Two, two handers coming back. And a call on the play. Uh, I think it's a fast count. It's coming in six. Yeah, I think Minion there, a marking infraction is called. I don't think he uh, acknowledged it. I didn't use the stall count. So. The British player having a stop player now will come in on six, I think. Upfield is quite deep. He's only really got uh, Wong or Dathan in the reset. Oh, we're on the <laughs> we're on the stream. I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why Liam was waving his hands there. We're looking a bit cold in the in the stands at the back there. Turner eventually gets the reset to Dathan. A nice backhand. Cross to, to to Wong, gets it to Barnes. Barnes goes inside, but there's no one there, and it's turfed. And a chance to level it up now. The French got a bit of momentum here. Poivu picking this one up. Muller and Ehrman back with him. Oh, oh Dathan poached there in the lane. Well played, Koska. She's gonna cost you to Turner. Pricey was waiting a little while to use that one. G Beauty, G Beauty doing that all day. Lagging off on the handler marks and shutting down those lanes. The French need to be aware of that. That was a big chance to break and they threw it away, David. Yep, and uh, and as I said earlier, this point very key in the in the in the, in the over outlook of the whole game. With only uh, 15 minutes left to go. You need to hold on to your brakes and France need to grab them back. But GB looking more dominant at this point. Now GB pushing out their D-line. Can they get another break? Can France grab grab some back? Stay tuned folks, here with Liam Grant, David Price, Sky Magazine, working with Elisa TV on the production here at the European Ultimate Championships in Copenhagen. France on offense, Scala. Bobbing that one around, and then setting up. Looks like that zone again from GB. Kind of a cup with a or kind of a forced middle look. Again, we've seen the French play through this quite easily, and I expect them to do the same. Yeah, and especially with the wind, it's, it's not quite as strong as we've had earlier, or gustier as we've had earlier today and yesterday. I'd expect the French to be able to work through this. Very <laughs> well, <laughs> I say as the. French uh, handlers. Yeah, Scala is a matrix catch there. Let's see him again. Not a lot of movement from downfield. The handler is looking comfortable though. Slowly getting here. Oh, spoke too soon. Too much pate and the baguette this morning, I'd say, on that one. Yeah, and Sam Rayner did well. He came in and made it difficult. And there's Sam Rayner straight away taking on the break to pick good. Oh, she reels it in for the goal, and that's 13-10 GB. From something to nothing there, GB getting the block and the goal within one pass. Yeah, the French very close to being, being level moments ago and find themselves 3-0 down. Sorry, uh, 13, three 10. behind. <laughs> three behind with uh, not a lot of time left on the clock. game, the game of runs, 
We've seen come, teams come back from bigger deficits. Coming up in our next stream game is, is the Germany-France women's division game. Germany, current windmill champions, beating Russia there. Uh, it will be a very good game. That will be commentated by the Liams. Liam Grant, Liam Rosen. Yeah, Liam squared on that one. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Hopefully, uh, I'll have some time to warm up, have some lunch in me. Hopefully, he's got to go for another hour and a bit to stay warm. Looks like there's a timeout. We don't see we don't see any indication of one on the pitch. Yeah, it appears so. I think it was called by the French. I don't think this game's gone there, Liam. In short. Really well, a great battle here. And I wouldn't be surprised if these teams met again for the London competition or even in the final. Uh, two powerhouses of the mixed division. Getting it on here on field two. I actually quite like the GB kit. I think you said it's made by Open Bracket. Is that the yeah, the guy holding the disc here yeah. is uh, Richard, Pring uh, Richard Pringle Taylor. He designs many, many things, websites, kit, and the uh, Open Bracket to Ultimate. You'll see a lot of the designs he's done for national teams, club teams. He's even done the Show Games logo. So that's one of his pieces. Whoa. Yeah, right? It's a big dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, he designed this kit. Yeah. You can see on show here and the German national kit that you would have seen yesterday on the stream. And, uh, and you'll probably see again later on. Yeah, in many ways I'd love to trade for the GB long sleeves, but I uh, consider it sacrilegious in yeah. my country. <laughs> and also, and, uh, the GP players don't like getting rid of them either. Scala <laughs> <laughs> is safe as a house under that disc. And in the spot of Adornado, puts it out into space. Oh, and a great layout from Unsalan. Looking to jack it deep now. Oh, oh. what a D. Richard Whitecrackers there. Uh, Gets the D and assist. GB up 14 10 now. A lovely goal there for number two, Claire Still. And some lovely defense as well by uh, Rick, uh, Robert White. Yeah, the French handlers never looked comfortable for a second there. Fantastic. Defensive pressure yeah, for the they British were, and a well deserved turn and goal. They were struggling just to get it away uh, between the two of them, let alone upfield. Nice pressure from uh, Richard Taylor and, and Robert White. So, with uh, around nine minutes left, GV are up four. I'll be betting some gelato right now that uh, we'll be seeing this GB and Irish team facing off in the final. And uh, me and you hectically commentating it. <laughs> yeah, that could be an interesting game, especially the way GB have started this tournament. Yeah. I've been very impressed with the, their play in this game after losing to both uh, France and Ireland in the Golden Cup to come third. They've definitely stepped up here uh, in Copenhagen. Really sending out a strong message to uh, all the teams in this mixed division. I feel like they must have been missing players at Golden Keg. Um, that may be one of the reasons why they weren't as strong. Simone with the disc down. GB employing the zone again. Or at least having some double coverage. Ooh. Yeah, it's like a, a poach in the open lane by the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of an hour ahead. Nice little high release flick. Working it up now. There. 
Müller. Oliver, spicy hammer, and it's a goal. Number eight, Celine Antoine with a great goal. You feel France could do it a bit more hammers and stuff there. They're really going for the short play. And GB squeezing and squeezing and squeezing that. Okay, they might not work every time, but they're going to open up the field for you and allow you to play the offense you want to. The score here is 14-11 uh, to Great Britain. If you want to get in contact with us up here, it's, uh, the best option is David underscore Price on Twitter, P-R-Y-C-E. We've had a few tweets throughout the game. Time is ticking, ticking down now for the French. Currently three points down. GB on offense now. Another short pull by the French. Wong takes his time, walks up to the disc. Again, isolating Turner. And he's gone deep. And that's it, that's 15-11. Wong to Turner. Making sure, one pass ultimate. Crispy clean offense there from uh, the British. Looking so smooth and silky all day long. And I don't know if the French have it in them to, to get back in this one. Yeah, it's almost an insurmountable with three minutes or so left. Of the, of the game, sorry, five, five minutes left of the game. And at the current score, 15-11, GBO need to score two more to win the game in the, in the points gap. GB Sam GB Samvar pulling, getting it a lot further than the French. The French down off it's Ermin. The player they need to take hold of this game, and it called. Unsalan on the disc. Casually swinging, moving up the field to Knott. Back to Ehrman. Oh, and a bad drop there from the French. Alperin picking up straight away. King, it's a white, he gets high. Oh, but a conservation of greatness there. Not able to get that break to the, to the GB player. Yeah, Ehrman doing well there to close down that lane. And it's progressing up the field. Only one or two cutters moving up field now. He just stretched this, this field. Someone going deep now. There it is. Desi Puck. A pick called. Decline that. Decline that. Ooh, interesting. If, I, if it happened before the throw, David, I think it still stands. Yeah, let's say this one's going back. Yeah. Good option there by the French. Looks like it was very clearly a pick, though. Yeah. They're not great at keeping the throwing lanes clean, this French team. France on offense. Just wants a deep shot. This goes up. This one overthrown. 
pick was called, but I'm pretty sure this should be a turnover. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't, they carried on playing. Yeah, it and no effect. the pick did not affect play at all there. Antoine trying to argue otherwise, but yeah, yeah. I think that's going to call the turnover. That's fair. Alperin now picking up. One of the only remaining players in the previous uh, GB mixed squad from the Europeans and, and Worlds. And now on to Bevan. Fakes the deep shot. But goes down the line. Oh, and max it to Sam oh. Vile. And he goes all the way around to White and uh, Another conservation of greatness <laughs> moment there. Yeah. Vahl taking on a, a harder option around. GB fantastic at conserving that greatness. Yeah. <laughs> Just leveling it out when they have to. I think we've got a hole in our vial of greatness. <laughs> <laughs> Just dripping out of the bottom. French, we need the hammer's point home. Deep cut going straight away. A oh, bit of a misread. Oh, Bevan making sure though. Maybe giving up a few yards. Yeah. Um, unlike the GB team, the French team have a kind of two-year thing going on with this, this national squad. So they've been playing together for the last two years. Yep. And I think all the French teams are doing this to really try to develop some chemistry. Yeah, there is actually, um, it's actually started this year, this mixed team of trying to make that similar sort of idea of playing together over a number of years. So. That has only started with this campaign, though, in, in, in preparation for Worlds and, and further. So now Vile on the disc after that. That French turnover gets it to Alperin, who goes high. And make sure Alperin back around to Vile. Vile to Bevan, but a travel called. I'm not, I'm not so sure about that, actually. Look like he had that back foot down quite hard, but Liam may be disagreeing with me here. Yeah, a tough one to call. Don't necessarily think a bad travel call by any means. No, no, not the worst. Definitely seen a lot worse travel calls. Uh, according to our clock, time is now over. Viol oh, a violation call. Asian. Uh -huh. Hey, I didn't say violation. <laughs> violation. <laughs> well, back in. Vile breaks to, to white. Doesn't like Swan for the goal. Oh, Alfred clogs slightly. Oh. Takes on a lefty and it goes to no one. France now, go work it up. Yeah, Herman now at the disc. The French look a lot more comfortable when Herman is regulating this offense. Moving up field, oh, and another wibbly wobbly catch there from the French. Yeah, that's another drop. Can't be doing that. Timeout call by Vial. Does he have any in the cap? Uh, as far as I know, you're allowed to call them in the cap. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. It's one of those one of those rules you don't see very often, so I always forget whether it's uh, being used or not. Yeah, we're using with the championship rules, and you call, can call the timeout in the cap. Rain has started uh, to fall a little bit here. Just a bit of spitting. Of course, everyone running away immediately, playing back a few, a few, a few rows. Timeout call GB. Currently up 15 11. Go to Twitter. That was great. A fun fact from Nick Moss. Robert White is the prettiest guy in UK Ultimate. I'd like to, uh, to, to not agree with that. Well, you play in UK, don't exactly. you? Exactly. Of course. Obviously, I'm in the Republic of Ireland, so it doesn't apply to me. Yeah. So uh, thanks, Nick, for that. 
Who has the best hair in UK Ultimate is what I want to know, Nick Moss. Who's the best hair? Hair? Best hair. Facial or just head, hair on head? Hair on a head. Hair on head. All right, then, Nick. I'll let you do that research. And, uh... Oh, a little comment back from Ali Smith saying the best mix handlers she's ever played with are Rob Whitehouse and Twig. Twig, a previous uh, Cambridge player. They just see space and someone who can, who can run. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I've also played with White House, and yeah, he's a very good handler. Uh, he's here with the uh, Open Masters team. So, time out over. This battle of the channel Great Britain <laughs> versus France. File on the disc. Gets hit to Alperin. Alperin calls foul. Back in on zero. Alperin in. Another, another call. Yep, another foul call or contact. French defender not happy with that. Contests. And we're back in again. Goes down the line to Vile. Oh, and under a lot of pressure from two. Takes a grab, swings it to Alperin. Gets it to Bevan. Vile now on that near sideline to Bevan. Vile streaking across. Bevan doesn't like that, but breaks to Vile instead. With a lovely dish. Oh! That was definitely behind her. And both players down, discussing whether that was a foul <laughs> or not. Yeah, lying down, working on their tans there. Unusual for the discussion to take place while lying on the ground. I don't know if they're hurt or just. No call. Turnover. The French pick up Paul Escaton with the disc. Not much. Ups it down the field. Throws the hook up. This one on the plate again for the French. Pushing up the field. They need a score. Ancelan with the big hammer to the back. Oh, and can't be gathered up, and there's a call. Instantly contested by Bevan. Yeah, maybe want to discuss that one a little more, the two players. I think Bevan had made his mind up about that contest. But uh, a difficult one to make. <laughs> Once land again, part of the end zone. Moving it up. Oh, and a good catch there for the French. They needed that one and it goes begging. That's like the third drop they've had this, this, this set of points now. France not really on all, on all, uh, firing on all horses at all. <laughs> Alperin picks it up now on this, nip, on this far sideline. Right on the corner of the end zone. She goes big. Can Big Good reel it in or White? Or the French player instead. Unterland picking up the scraps. Getting his French offense moving quickly. Oh, Nobbs is getting it there. Looking at the open side, driving upfield. A good poach there! Great defense by the British player. That's Rob White, yet again, sitting in that lane. An injury call. <laughs> Confusing woof of hand signal there. I'm not sure <laughs> he's done the right one. Uh, but White has been replaced by a Colt Hammer. Far goes to pick up. Some good D there by GB. Oh, 
So he's into Cole Hamlin. Sent us to Bevan. Gets it to Vile. Oh, he slips. He had, did have a deep option. Oh, Bevan had his hand out for the reset. And miscommunication. It means that France now with the short field. Ironman picking up this disc. The maestro watching it. She do. Not much options for a downfield. Not looking impressed. Takes the easy swing. <laughs> Bevan poaching in the lane there. Has proved effective for the British so far. The French walking this one closer to the end zone. Antoine back. Ehrman commanding her players what to do. Oh, and a hand block there from Bevan. Yeah, and Cohammer going deep straight away to Vile. Oh, who was hoping that the French player had misread it. Yeah, Paul Lesbaton just throwing his claws up in the air, getting a fingertip to that. Keeping the French in this game. Yeah, we're already 10 minutes uh, over time here. But I, as far, whoever scores this will decide whether it's a game to... This going up. 16 or 17. We're sailing through the air. It could be pitch perfect. Unreal throw and grab from France. A buttery biscuit flying high into the sky and reeled in by Antoine. And I believe that means it's a game to 16. Yeah, I think you're right there, David. The French have a bit more uh, confidence in their waddle right now. It's what they need. Big ass to score four points on the trot now, though. the last point of the game. GB can hold their muster. Take their time. Punch this in. And here's the points up. Francia again pulling near near the brick and between the brick and half. Dathan goes deep immediately to Turner and it's a goal and the win for GB <laughs> tip my hat to GB for that play there or is it maybe we're wrong yet again yeah, French players are That's frozen like statues yeah, we down the field we thought they were going to the line but they were just disappointed GB with the win there 16-12. And what was a very hotly contested game until I'd say the end of the second half there where GB were able to take a few breaks and France just didn't have an answer for that, for that strong defense and that slick offense. Yeah, probably the best play we've seen on this show field from that GB team. Scarily good. I love this, watching this replay, running to the disc and just jacking it. The French caught sleeping. Well played, GB. But I think, still think the French should be proud of what they've, of the way they played. We'll now see their uh, women's team taking on Germany in the next stream game. I think that's a 